You can see how to scrape it off the side wall on the forehand and then the backhand. Do not try to hit the ball in the middle of the racket. Instead, shave it off the side wall with the frame. Another very difficult shot is retrieving the ball from the back corner. You could try a defensive shot by hitting the ball off the back wall. If you can't manage this, use a boast of the side wall to reach the front wall. Put your left foot forward, bend down and stroke the ball right underneath with full power. Routine 37 alternates two boasts, a backhand and a forehand. You'll need to turn quickly and stretch well. Don't let the ball bounce twice. Do the exercise for a minute at a time with a 30 second rest in between. The length of the exercise depends on your particular ability, but aim towards a one minute routine increasing the time as you get better. For routine 38, you must hit the ball hard onto each side wall in turn, using alternate backhands and forehands with the ball bouncing in the service box. The exercise develops power, a strong and steady wrist, and the ability to hit the ball straight. Routine 39 is similar to the previous one, except that a manat is using the front and back walls instead of the side walls. He must hit it hard to the front wall and lob it off the back wall. Now he has to use more movement. It's quite demanding on the legs. In routine 40, we add the cross-court lob off the back wall to the previous exercise. Amarnat mixes the cross-court lob with the straight drive. This is not only a greater test of control, but further extends the amount of movement needed. A good player should be able to manage 20 one-minute sessions of these with a 30 seconds rest in between. In routine 41, Amarnat stands still and hits the ball into the corner, striking the front wall first and then the side. The ball comes back to where it started from. This develops power and the ability to finish the rally to a length at the back or hard into the nick at the front. Routine 42 demonstrates ghosting. The coach calls the shot required and the player responds as quickly as possible. This sharpens your reactions on court. Front forehead. Only left hand. Back hand. Back back hand. Leg. Front forehead. Routine 43 is pressure training. The coach feeds the ball and extracts maximum effort from the player who has to return to the tee between each shot. Hit. Keep it low. Come on. Amanat starts with a tickle boost and low cross-court drive and progresses to a combination of the volley boost, drop and drive. And he will do the same on the other side. In routine 44, the coach lobs down the wall, working the player high on the volley boast. Then he plays it short, working the player low on the boast. Sometimes players who usually have good control over a shot, surprisingly lose it when required to reach up or down. This stretching is also very tiring. Good. In routine 45, things are getting tougher. Here is another kind of pressure training which combines a number of different shots. 
a manat must stretch to reach the drop shot. Then a hard length is played to the back, forcing him to cover the diagonal, the furthest possible distance he can go to make the return cross court. Routine 46 includes all four corners. Johangir and Del Harris are practicing length, boast and drop. This is good for both skill and fitness. There is little or no recovery time. As soon as you have played one stroke, you have to move to another corner. This takes a degree of cooperation. One player may well be able to kill off the other in a routine as demanding as this, but the object is to stretch the opponent just enough extending the rally as long as possible. Now Jahangir and Dell modify the exercise. They still boast and drop, but instead of driving down the wall, they drive across court. Both exercises test you mentally and physically, and they are excellent practice for those long, hard rallies in real match play. The two perform this exercise at a tremendous pace and with great control. They show just what can be achieved with dedication to a disciplined program of training and practice. Routine 47 is boast, lob and volley down the wall. It's another variation of working from corner to corner, bringing the player from the back to the front and then back again. the ball's played down the wall to a length followed by a boast and it's performed on both sides. You can put extra pressure on yourself and make it more like a real match by returning to the tee between each shot. Routine 49 is two against one. The player on his own has very little time to recover. The two together should take one side each and try not to kill the ball. Instead, they should play just far enough away to keep stretching it. This is one way to get good competition, whatever the standard of the opposition. An advanced player can go on court with two lesser players and still find he has more than enough to do. Look at the variations of strokes these players produce. is the famous cat and mouse routine. The cat chases the mouse, but when the coach calls out, the roles are reversed. This often happens in a real match when an attacking shot is picked up and turned into a sudden counter-attack. To become the complete player, you have to cope with both kinds of pressure in a match, to attack and defend. It's no good practicing all these strokes if you don't know when to apply them. To create a winning formula, you must be fit, have good technique and intelligent tactics. Fitness and technique we've already dealt with. Tactics are the third vital dimension. They are essential at any level of the game. By watching for the strength and weakness of your opponent's game and recognizing your own abilities, you should be able to produce a game plan that could almost win you the match by itself. The domination of the central tee position is the prime requirement. Usually, you can do this by placing the ball as far away from your opponent as possible, stretching him from one corner to another. Access to the four corners is most easily achieved from this central T position. 
In this quick replay, watch how both players keep returning to it, vying for control of the centre. How successful they are depends almost entirely on the accuracy of the shots they play. The court can be divided into two areas. When you are on the tee and the opponent's return is in court one, he has made a weak shot. You should return the ball into either of the court twos. If the opponent himself has played the ball in court two, you will have to relinquish the tee. Here a weak return of serve is followed by a backhand drop shot into court two. If in the same situation you move across and play a forehand drop shot, the opponent must go around you to reach the ball. If you now feel the opponent may anticipate the ball going to one corner, send it to the other. This time the return is in court two, but the opponent can still be stretched into the furthest corner. A weak return to court one results in a volley cross-court kill. A return comes to court two, but again the opponent can be stretched by taking the ball early and quickly. The ball's been returned to court two, but by pretending to play to a length, you deceive your opponent by playing a boast. A return to court two. Pretending to boast may make him move forward while you drive the ball to the back. This time you pretend to play a drop shot, which moves him to the front, whilst you play a cross-court drive. Now your opponent moves you off the tee with a volley boast return. You pretend to play a cross-court, but instead play a reverse angle, completely deceiving him. Again a return to the front. You show him a boast, but play a straight drive to the back. A reverse angle return brings the ball back to the backhand. You pretend to play down the wall, but wrong foot him with a tickle boast. A good return moves you from the tee and gives him the chance to stretch you to the front and win the rally. It's obvious from all these plays how important it is to read your opponent's game. If you get it wrong, you'll find it difficult to get to the ball at all, let alone make a winning shot. However, you can turn this to your advantage by using disguise and playing with as much variety as possible. Think two strokes ahead and store up in your memory what's happened in previous rallies. You will gradually develop a sixth sense as to which shots to use under particular conditions. There's a psychology behind this as well. By giving the impression that you're reading the game and knowing what your opponent's likely to do, you may exude a confidence that demoralizes him. Obviously, you should always change a losing game. Cut out your mistakes, prolong the rallies, improve your length, Keep in front of your opponent as much as possible. But whatever you do, never change a winning game. Welcome to Toronto's Columbus Centre and the McGuinness World Open Squash Championship. Number one seed Jeff Hunt of Australia has beaten Mohamed Awad of Egypt 3-0. Ross Thorne of Australia by default. Ian Robinson of Great Britain, 3-0. Three days before the World Championship started, Jahangir actually hurt his shoulder. Yes, he pulled ligament in his shoulder and he couldn't even lift his racket up. Was worrying, obviously. But that's where my own experience with injuries helped me and I had to take care of his shoulder and give him very careful massage. Jahangir. In that final, that extraordinary final, Jeff Hunt had actually taken the first game off you and you, you were down and everyone thought that Jeff Hunt was going to beat you. When Remit told you that um, it was actually two years to the day that Torson died, how did you feel? 
Well, uh, I, I knew when I was leading 2 1, and Rem told me about that yesterday when Thor some died, and it made me more determined in the court. Boy, fight. Let the Rem go for 10 days. Remember, today is the day when Thor some died, two years ago. If you win, inshallah, we will take the trophy to Thor some's grave. So fight, boy. Fight. This is game point for Australian Jeff Hunt. We have just had a break in the action because of a torn or broken ball. Hunt leads the opening game 8-5. to five. Win this nine-point game if he wins this point. Game ball, Jeff Hunt to serve, leading 8-7. of having a serve is that you can make an error. In that particular case, Jahangir felt that he had a chance for the winner and went after it. Unfortunately, his point of view... Game two. That's it. Well, that is it for Young Jack. Never mind. He lost the first game, but it has lasted nearly an hour. Everything is going according to our plan. Just keep him working. Getting by five, he certainly had his work cut out for him. Has his work cut out for him. These are only nine point games, and Khan has been very, very steady in the second game. Is 17 unusually young for a player of this caliber, or like in women's and to some extent men's tennis, are the players simply becoming younger year by year? No, I think really that uh, 17 is extremely young to be a, of the caliber that Jahangir is. He has a lot, a lot of ability, and it's developed over a short period of time. He has tremendous court sense out there, too. We figured that Hunt, with the experience, as the match wore on, would probably have the better court sense. But I tell you, this Khan is staying right with him. Well, he's really working, Jeff, too. Jeff. Oh, yes! <laughs> a real turnaround now in this World Open. The defending world champion and the favorite, Jeff Hunt from Australia, winning the opening game 9-7. Young Khan came back to win the second game 9-1 and has now won game 3, 9-2. Now listen, boy. You are too one up. You have got to take this game. Little bit more pressure. Keep him moving and remember, patience and no mistake. He now is within two points of winning the World Open. One can't help but be impressed with the ability of this young player. He just seems to have everything, not just the speed and the fitness, but also the shots. Hunt is simply amazing. 34 years of age, he has been out there now for a long, long time, well over an hour. He looks like he's hardly been moving. Well, the trick of the game is to be able to not put on oh, no. tired in any way. Buzzing 
After Khan fell down, got up, the point continues. Tremendous point. Oh! How's that for a series of great gets? This is the best point in the match so far. Simply outstanding. Both players getting a little bit of a rest up and down the back of the wall. Oh! It is now match point. The ball is to delay as long as you can. If you notice, he delayed it completely the last second and fooled Jeff with a cross court drop. thanks to Ramat, you know, he was living in England and he promised to my father and he promised everybody in family and he brought me back to England and since he helped me so much that uh, after two years, you know, I've become the world champion.